Hey Pirates, PK here. Today, I'm sharing all my Lico tricks, the secrets, formulas, and templates that I use to break into Fang. And guess what? I compiled a complete list of all essential techniques on my website for free. No emails, subscriptions, or any bullshit like that. Just visit my website at piratekingdom.com. Again, everything you need from the handy Lico tricks, a cheat sheet of all the common patterns, your time complexities, the basic templates, and even Lico playground links where you can compile, run, and test the code yourself in both Python and Java are all there for free. All you need, visit piratekingdom.com, period. Enough talking, let's dive into it. I broke this video down into three sections. One, I'll go over the six tips and tricks that can come in handy during coding interviews. Two, I'll go over my Lico cheat sheet. And three, show you how to play around with the example codes on my website. So let's start with one, the handy Lico tips and tricks. Tip one, leftmost binary search. In case you forgot, a binary search is a logarithmic search algorithm that finds the position of a target value within a sorted array. If the problem states that the input array is sorted, there's a high chance it's a binary search problem. Now, this variant of binary search is handier than the conventional one we've learned in school because it has two interesting properties besides finding the target. One, it returns the target's first occurrence or leftmost index if it exists. Two, it returns the index of where the target should be if it does not exist. Let's go through some examples together. Given this sorted array, the leftmost binary search of target three returns index two because that's the first occurrence of the target value. What if the target doesn't exist though? If we do a leftmost binary search of target four, it returns index five, which is a great location to put the target if we insert it into the sorted array. Now, how is this useful then? Well, did you notice the leftmost binary search of target three returns its starting index while that of target plus one returns its ending index plus one? Yes, within a sorted array, you can use the leftmost binary search to find an element's first and last position in logarithmic time. Again, you can find this implementation, my solution to the legal problem, a link to the sandbox, and the list of related questions on my website. Tip two, deck. Instead of memorizing the interfaces of a stack, queue, and linked list, just use a deck. I explain in this video the reasons why I recommend Python and Java for lead coding. The two languages shine because deck is built in, meaning it might not be available in other languages. A deck is a double-ended queue that can add or remove elements from both ends in amortized constant time. If you add last and remove last, that's a stack. If you add last and remove first, that's a queue. If you do both, that's a linked list. Do you see how a deck can represent all three data structures with just four interfaces? A word of caution here. Some interviewers, even those at Fang, do not know what a deck is. <sighs> if you meet one, you might have to explain what it is during the interview or just consider yourself unlucky. <sighs> Tip three, string concatenation. This mistake is one of the most common ones I see. Do not concatenate strings within a loop. Why? A string is immutable, meaning you can't change it once created. When you concatenate two strings, it's not simply adding one at the end of another. What's happening internally behind the scenes is that it creates a whole new string. That's linear, not constant. Solution, use a string builder instead. It was made specifically for this purpose, to concatenate strings in constant time. It's virtually a list of characters. For Python users, use string that join on a list for the equivalent effect. Let me demonstrate how efficient string builder is compared to the plus equals operators. In this Lcode playground, I'm appending the character a n times or 150,000 times as an example. Let's measure the performance of the same operation for both. Do you see how string builder is significantly faster? Time complexity wise, the string builder implementation is O of n, while its concatenation counterpart is O of n squared. If you'd like a more detailed explanation, Google up string immutability. Tip four, in order to reversal of a binary search tree. Remember binary search tree? It's a binary tree where the left child is smaller and the right child is greater than its parent. I'm sure you remember this, but what many people often forget is that the in order a traversal of a binary search tree visits all the nodes in ascending order. You can use this property to validate whether a tree is a binary search tree and retrieve its values in sorted order. Tip five, helper pointers in a linked list. If pointer calculations mess up a code, try creating a dummy node, link it to the head. It can simplify your logic and thought process. Also, use slow and fast pointers if the problem requires finding the middle or the nth node in a linked list. Tip six, quick select. 
Wait, you've heard of quick sort, but what's a quick select? A quick select is a selection algorithm to find the kth smallest or kth largest element in an unordered list. You might say, well, that's easy. I'll use a priority queue to solve it in O of n log k time. True, but can we do better than n log k? This is where quick select comes into play. It works similarly to how quick sort works. It selects a random pivot and partitions the element into two groups of less than and greater than the pivot. But unlike quick sort, where you have to process both the left and right subarrays, quick select only needs to do it for one. Think about it. When searching for the largest element, if the pivot ends up in the middle, do we need to involve the smaller half? You get the concept, right? Now then, how is this better than O of n log k? As in the example, if we assume the algorithm recurs half the list each time, it processes n elements in the first recursive call, n over 2 in the second, n over 4 in the third, and so forth, until there's only one element remaining. Remember this geometric series? It converges into 2. If we multiply by n, it converges into 2n or O of n. Yes, for this problem, quick select is the better choice over a priority queue because the algorithm is linear on average. The catch here is that it has a worst case time complexity of O of n squared, which happens if the array is already sorted. I won't discuss the details in this video, but I encourage you to learn why. In real world implementations, however, quick select is fast and efficient. Understanding how its worst case performance is quadratic can be a bonus point for your interviews. So these are my six handy tips and tricks. Let's quickly go over my lead code cheat sheet. There are two sections to it, patterns and templates. Patterns is where you find the common problem types, the keywords, the techniques involved, and their time complexities. Click on the links and you jump to templates of the essential patterns and algorithms. They are in Python and Java. And if you click on the link, it will bring you to a playground where you can readily run example codes. If you'd like to modify it, fork the playground. Easy, right? Cool. Just an FYI, I created this page with the initiative to help you guys get started on Lead Code. I hate to say this, but I'll be fully transparent and say that this alone won't be enough. Lead Code is hard, which is why even engineers at Fang grind months in advance. It takes time and effort. This cheat sheet is just a baseline and not a shortcut to acing an interview. Recall the cheat sheet you created during your college exam. You must prepare for the test to make full use of it, right? On the other hand, going to an exam without study but with someone else's cheat sheet is like walking into your own grave. Know your algorithms. Grind, grind, and grind. Most importantly, don't give up. A month of hard work will pay off. That's it, Pirate. I try to pack my cheat sheet with as many comprehensive details as possible. Let me know in the comments below if I'm missing anything or if you have any ideas or suggestions. I also compiled a list of relevant questions and excellent resources to accelerate your grind, so check it out. Lastly, while surfing on my homepage, you might as well explore some great deals, including $1,000 off any springboard boot camps and free stocks on Weeble. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Peace.